Okay, here we go. Our Zena's, her flying color technique. So what I'll do, I'll section off the back and the sides. And this is a freehand color technique. So what I'll do, through the top area, I'll do a zigzag parting so everything, once I reach the top area, I want everything to fall out softer. And then I'll begin on the right side and I take a Z section. After the Z section, then I'll go and take out those triangles there. And then my color, I'm using lightener with 30 volume. The consistency of the lightener for these type of freehand chemicals is really important. I aim for the consistency of like toothpaste. So something that's thick enough, but it's like borderline thick enough that it won't seep or get too messy, but that it also doesn't dry out. And that may be a lot to ask of a lightener, but it's, it's actually quite achievable. Okay, and then as you use this technique, you want to start off by elevating the hair by the root. And then you hit the, the triangle has three squares. So you go and hit each side of that. And then just gently using the tips of your brush, go and like saturate the ends. And when you drop the hair, you want it to drop in a nice like curve manner. You don't want to drop the hair, like just dump it there and it falls really flat. And then the chemical will start to like mixing a bit much with the, the other natural hair around it. For this technique, you're going to have to go and use a lot of finesse, right? Don't go in and just try and bully the hair around because you'll, you'll lose. You have to be like super like smooth and sleek with all of your motions, okay? And remember that when you set that hair down, set it down gently. Set it down in a curved manner. You can actually go in there and manipulate the curved manner. Okay, so same technique. Now we're at the above the parietal ridge. So still, remember grabbing those triangles. Start off always by elevating the hair and then hit each side of that triangle and then gradually work through the ends and you're looking for a consistent distribution of that product. And again, always when you set the hair down, set it down gently in a curved manner. So now to the top, I'm gonna throw in a second color. This second color is a level one neutral with 10 volume developer. Um, it'll give me a nice contrast because she already has some natural. So the light here will break through the tint and then also by intermixing the light with the level one neutral, it'll give me a lot of texture and contrast through the top area. So again, going in with a zigzag and then painting around. And again, just like gently dropping that hair. If when you're trying out this technique in the beginning, if you feel a bit iffy about it, you can also go and tease those roots a bit so that'll automatically give you enough dimension so when the hair falls it doesn't fall too flat okay so here we go again zigzag partings and notice here how I started off using the darker color I'm planning to cut her hair. The technique I'll be using is a very asymmetric. So for the left side, I'm gonna immediately start working in that blue black, that one end with my lightener. Because that way when the hair falls naturally, it'll give me contrast. Because again, the chemical technique always has to fit the haircut technique. So the theory for her haircut it, it's an asymmetric shape. One shape's longer, one shape, sh one, the other side's shorter. So I have to match my chemical technique to feel the to feel the end result and also complement the haircut. So if one side has more like one end with the pre-lightener, so the overall effect will have more texture and a little bit darker. The other side will still have that texture and the end result will be a bit lighter. So we have a little bit of contrast with that color, which is great because once I finish the haircut, I also will have definite and very clear contrast with the lengths. And the internal shape is also like asymmetric.
can, and then there's uh, there's always a, a lot of different adaptations to this technique. For example, you could go in with a zigzag parting, like take it really tight, like a seamstress. And then if you go in just like paint little strands of hair, the end result will be super, super, super natural. If you go in with the bigger Z's, then the end result will be heavier. So you can always intermix and like, for example, like for this section, I could go in with a light tuner, then a high lift, and then like maybe a level seven. So I can, the same section, I can play with different tones. So I, I just, I recommend just actually getting this technique down so that you feel comfortable using it. You have that confidence behind the chair to like roll this technique out and allow it to make you more money and up your retention and up your ticket. And then once you get accustomed to this technique, then you there's so many creative adaptations that you can just like kick in. So we're just working up the fringe area. Now here, I'm going to take it a little bit heavy because she already has that pre-existing color. But this one, the heavy piece is a darker of the two, so which, which is really cool. So it'll give me that contrast, like because she has this this little cowlick through the front, so it'll allow that area to pop. Okay, there we have it. So with the with the blow dry, I'll just go in with the round brush, and I'll just I'll start flat wrapping the hair. Now I'm gonna go get, I'm aiming for some artificial poof, so I'm, I'm looking for like root lift. And as I dry the hair, I'm always drying in that big curved sh shape. Drying the hair, I'm always going for like a super shiny effect. So notice how my, the angle of my nozzle, how it follows my round brush. And also like if you really want to get the hair super shiny, I recommend a, a monster blow dryer. What I mean by monster blow dryer is that I want the wind speed super strong and the heat level like crazy hot. So that way I, I save time. And with that high wind speed, that will give me a lot of root lift. It will allow me to close that cuticle scale even that much more better. If the wind speed wasn't there, I wouldn't get as much closure with the cuticle scale. So like the, your selection of dryers is, is really, really important. Okay, so again, so the finish, I'm using a lot of tension in the beginning just to get that cuticle scale nice and sealed. And then once it's nice and sealed, I'll go in and I'll start to like cook in a big curved shape. So right now I'm just cooking and I'm always have like I always have the brush moving. I don't want it like, for this technique, I don't want to dry it too stiff. I want it to be organic. And to get something that's organic and soft and moves a lot, actually I have to start moving a lot throughout the blow dry. Okay, and there we have it, our Xena flying colors. Enjoy.